Hey guys, in this video I'm talking about five ways to stop getting so angry with your kids. I know this is a very common issue for a lot of parents. I love my kids, but they can be a source of frustration. I understand that, especially if you're dealing with stress, which I think most people do. But we really want to manage this anger because it can be uh, such a source of pain for our kids. It can create these emotional wounds. And so we want to control it as much as possible, even though we can't be perfect. So here's five of my favorite tips to really rein in our anger and diminish it. So the first tip is, it's pretty practical, but the first tip is use consequences immediately. Here's what I mean by that. A lot of times when our kids are crossing boundaries, they're not listening to us when we say to stop doing something, they will keep going and then we give warnings. Oh, don't do that. You better not do that. Are you listening? And some parents will count one, two, three. Here's the thing. This is going to create a lot of frustration for you, having to do this to get your kids to listen every time. And the other thing is your kids will take as many warnings and chances as you give them. As long as it takes you to implement a consequence, that is how long they are going to take to start listening. So you want to implement a consequence right away. And if you do that, they'll start listening more often, not perfectly, but more often right away, they'll start listening. And so, and it doesn't need to be a severe consequence, just some, something mild, like having them sit on the floor for a minute, taking away the iPad, taking away the toy, uh, or turning off the movie for just for a couple of minutes so is fine. The, the, but it's so much more powerful if you do it immediately rather than giving them six, seven chances. And because that's just going to teach them you don't need to listen right away. You can keep disobeying. You can keep not listening to me for six or seven times because I'm not going to do anything until after those six or seven warnings. It's going to be so much less stress on you if you implement the consequence right away. And so um, tip number two is look at what's really causing the anger. What is behind the anger? And a lot of times we feel angry because there's a pain or there's an unmet need, right? Um, so take some time to journal about this. Just sit, notice your feelings and uh, ask yourself, is there something I'm needing? Is there, am I not feeling loved or valued, respected? Am I not feeling connected to anybody? Um, is there some kind of pain like stress or a mental health issue or something going on? Just sit with your feelings, notice it, write it down and deal with whatever that issue is. And this brings me to tip number three, which is take care of your mental health. If you have a mental health issue like depression, stress, trauma, uh, a personality disorder, these things are a recipe for anger. Okay, so you want to get these under control and it's, I will say, it's almost impossible to deal with them yourself. Mental health issues, you need to get help from a professional. So find a competent therapist or coach that can help you work through these issues. It's really going to be important for you. And then the last two are kind of cliche, but they are really important. I'm going to, I, I want to bring them up and I'm going to stress the importance of them. Number tip number four is breathing exercises. Um, there's a couple of different breathing exercises out there. I recommend one is cyclic breathing, um, cyclic sighing, excuse me. It's called cyclic sighing. Uh, uh, there's five, five breathing, four, seven, eight breathing and box breathing. I heard are very good. And what this does, it, it, you may not see a big effect with your anger right away, but what it actually does, it, actually releases stress and trauma from the body. Um, it's been proven to do that. And so you might not notice a big change with your anger, but it's chipping away at a bit, a bit at a time and it's fixing other issues in your life too, as it's get ri getting rid of that stored trauma in your body. So breathing exercise is really good. They have a bunch of other health benefits too, helping your immune system, helping your mood, helping your uh, hormones and the chemicals in your body and stuff. So it's something I recommend everybody does just once a day, five minutes, three to five minutes is enough. If you can do 10 minutes, that's even better. And then lastly, you've probably heard this one before, but it is very important. Exercise daily. Number five is exercise daily. Exercise does the same thing. It helps release trauma from the body. It improves your immune system, improves your mood. And I've seen, um, 
I can't remember if it was psychologists or scientists that have said that exercise is better for your brain than brain exercises like Lumosity, you know, those game brain games um, that kind of teach you to exercise your brain and all that. They found that exercise is the best way to keep sharp in your brain, um, which is surprising when I read that, but it does make sense. If you, if you think about it, if you know someone that moves exercises regularly, they're going to be have better moods, they're going to be more sharper than someone that you know that is sedentary, right? And so exercise is really important. And again, you don't need to do it for a really long time. You don't need to do anything strenuous. Just walking five, 10 minutes a day is enough to really uh, help your mental health, help your brain, help your mood and everything. And if you do it, you won't notice a huge difference right away, but after some time being consistent with it, you'll notice that it really starts to help. So hope those five tips helps. If you have any questions about dealing with anger with your kids, go ahead and leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.